from childhood we have learnt everything is happening as per god's will right you came here as per god's will or you came here out of your choice so let us see how karma works and then we will realize how we can become the master of our life and we can change our destiny every minute every minute it is called trikal trikal means three aspects of time past is coming to me present is getting created future is getting decided so many times in life we plan how life will be and suddenly something happens which is not how we had planned and the first question that the mind says is why did this happen to me and then where do we blame where do we put the finger and say why did this happen to me so either we say because of them because of them because of them and when we don't know where to put the finger where do we put the finger and then we get angry there how could you do this with me does god decide what is happening in my life think does god decide what's going to happen in my life does god decide my destiny from childhood we have learnt everything is happening as per god's will right right so raise your hand right everything is happening as per god's will you came here as per god's will you came here as per god's will or you came here out of your choice out of your choice acha and what you decided to wear today was by god's will or by your choice now sitting here whether you want to listen or not listen is god's will or your choice and after listening whether to go back and use it is your choice or god's will so then what is god's will then which one is god's will in all this so we are doing the karma consequence of the karma will come to us and yet we are living our life saying everything is happening as per god's will just pause for one minute and think if god was writing our destiny then how would our destiny be how would our destiny be one word how would it be perfect if you write the destiny of your child how would the destiny be perfect once in a while little fever right fever every month for two days no why it's okay to have fever for two days what's going to happen but we will not write that how many marks in class will your child get if you write the destiny full how will his work be perfect how will his relationship be perfect most important is if you have two children one is very obedient one is little masti will you write a better destiny for one and a little lesser for the other one no so as a parent one you will write perfect destiny and two you will write equal destiny so god if god writes our destiny and we are all his children he will write a perfect destiny and he will write an equal destiny our destinies of people perfect today our destinies of people perfect today no first comes covid then comes floods then comes war all getting written there all is getting written over there no and yet we say everything is happening because of his will and then when something is not right in our life we get angry how could you do this to me there's another belief system which we learned from childhood everything is happening as per my karma most of our karmas are perfect but sometimes we have done certain things which were we don't remember when our karmas are not equal and so our destiny also cannot be the same 
So which one of these two belief systems seems right? Everything is happening as per God's will or everything is happening as per my karma? Bolo, bolo, you have to say it. Everything is happening as per. So now where does the finger go? Now not here, 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 not here. Now where does it come? Responsibility. Is this good news or not good news? Good news or not good news? Good news? You know why good news? Because if everything is happening as per my karma, so the power to change it also comes to me. Today we go to so many people telling them to change our destiny. We go and tell them, please do something so that this does not happen in my life. You think anyone can do that? You think anyone can do that? If in another hall outside, someone was going to sit and tell you what your future is going to be, will you sit here or you will go there? Someone is going to tell you next year what will happen, five years later what will happen, you will sit here or you will go there? Over there, you will learn what will happen. Spirituality will teach you how to be when what happens. And most important, spirituality teaches me that I don't need to know what will happen. I just need to strengthen myself and remain strong, do the right karma always, attention, and when something happens, which I had done earlier, then I have the strength that time to face it. If I come to know beforehand, oh, two years later, this and this is going to happen. How are the two years going to be, before that even happens? So be very, very careful when you take information inside. If suppose someone comes and tells me, Next year, someone is going to cheat you. Now, the cheating is going to happen next year. I will start looking at everybody this year only. Who is that one who is going to cheat me? Who is that one who is going to cheat me? Is it at home? Is it at work? My emotion of doubt, of stress, of anxiety has already started getting created. And when that starts getting created, Atma Shakti, soul power starts reducing. Finally, what they had said that somebody will cheat will happen. Somebody will cheat. But when that person cheats, my energy to face that situation would have already gone down because I created so much fear, stress and doubt beforehand. But instead of knowing what is going to happen next year, if I just strengthen myself every day, then when that happens, it will only be a scene of life which I will cross with power and stability. So be very careful. Don't just casually ask people, what is going to happen? See my hand, what is written? This is not time pass. This is not. One information goes in, you are not able to remove it from there. And when you don't remove it from there, it starts creating fear in your life. Please close that door at the back. Close the door. So we have to be very, very careful about this. Now, how are they able to tell what is going to happen? Because it is a science. I have already created that karma. It is already there in my horoscope. So that is the science which tells us what is going to happen. Spirituality teaches us how to face what is going to happen. So what do we want to learn? What is going to happen? or how to face what is going to happen. Because even if you learn what is going to happen, you cannot change it, because it is going to happen. It is going to happen. So let us see how karma works. And then we will realize how we can become the master of our life, and we can change our destiny. Do we want to change our destiny, or do we want to continue with that same destiny? We want to change our destiny. No, some things are perfect. But karma needs to keep those perfect and those which are little bit not our way, we will need to see how to cross those scenes with stability. 
So what is karma? Karma is my every thought, my word, my behavior, my intention. Everything is karma. Karma is not just what I say and what I do. Karma is inside first. What I think, what I feel is karma. Karma means energy which I create. It goes out from me. So my thoughts and feelings go out from me, my words go out from me, my behavior goes out from me. So energy that I create and it goes out from me is my karma. Hold a ball in your hand right now. Hold, everybody. Hold carefully. This is your karma. Okay? Now, everyone, on top also. Hold your ball like this. And now there is a wall behind me. Carefully choose how you want to throw it, at which angle you want to throw it, and at which speed you want to throw it. Remember very well, it's going to hit the wall and it's going to hit the wall and it's going to come back. When it comes back, it is not in your control. What is in your control? Come on, do it. Don't throw so fast. This is only the mistake we make. Think. Soch samaj kar karo. Think. What karma am I creating? And not just think before you do. Not just think before you speak. Think before you think. Is this thought right? Should I think like this also? So now, carefully throw the ball. Throw through. Throw. Now you remember how you have thrown it. In a hall of 2000, everybody is throwing it a different way. Everybody is going to throw it a different way. And now visualize 2000 balls went and hit here. And when they go and hit here, they are going to come back. But they will come back at different timing. For someone, the ball will come back the next second. For someone, the ball will come after five minutes. For someone, the ball will come after ten years. And for someone, the ball will come back after hundred years. But the ball will come back. And will come back in the same style as it was thrown. It is not possible that someone else threw that ball and that came to you. Which one is going to come to you? Only and only what we had thrown. So do not look at other people's destiny. Do not look at other people's destiny. How come unke saath? How come? How come? You have no idea what balls they have thrown and come. But one thing is certain, it is a law, law of karma. That's why it's called the law of karma. Like law of gravity, always works and works equal with everybody. Similarly, law of karma always works and works equal with everybody. So never look at anyone else's destiny and say, Oh, they've not done anything great. How come everything is so nice for them? And then look at somebody else's destiny and say, Oh, they are so nice. Why such difficult things are happening with them? Nothing is happening unfair. Nothing is happening wrong. Everything that is happening is accurate as per my karma. So never call any scene of life wrong. Because the minute I call it wrong, I create another karma of feeling negative. Oh, this is not good. What is happening? This is wrong. What is happening? This is not fair. That is happening. I create another karma. So whatever happens in our life, it is accurate, it is fair, and most important, a third blessing that you can create for it is, it is beneficial for me. This is law of karma. Now, you have thrown the ball, the ball is coming back to you. When the ball is coming back to you, is that ball in your control? Can you change it? Can you change it? If you sit there and think, can I change it, can I change it, why does the ball change? 
So can I change situations? <coughs> can I change people? So don't waste time and energy. Don't waste time and energy. If you want to change them also, the only way to change is by changing what energy we send them. Then it will change. But just by change, they should change, they should change, this should change, this should change, it is not going to change. So one thing is certain, just my wanting someone to change, people will not change. I will have to do some karma for them to change, then they will change, everything will change. But I have to throw another ball for that. Now, when this ball is coming back to you, you cannot change the ball which is coming back to you. So what is in your control at that time? That ball is not in my control. But when any situation comes to us, how I respond to that situation, how I think, how I speak, how I behave is my, is my, this was my karma, it came back and when it is coming back to me, how I think, how I speak, how I behave now is my new karma. Now, see this, here she is, I am talking very rudely to her. I am troubling her, I am saying very rude things in front of 2,000 people, okay? In which direction is the ball for her right now? I am speaking wrongly to her, I am behaving badly with her, I am troubling her. So the ball is coming towards her. Can you see the ball going towards her? I am the one who is throwing the ball, it's all going towards her. The first thought that her mind creates is, why is she doing this to me? Do we create this thought or we don't create this thought? Why are they doing this to me? Please answer. Why is this coming to you? Answer. Every time there is a ball coming, answer should be ready. Why is this ball coming to me? Answer. Answer. Because when you answer, it will get recorded here. I know the answer, but you have to say it for yourself to get it recorded here. Why is this ball coming to me? Because I have thrown it. Please say it. Sure. Nothing can come to you unless you have thrown it. So, we waste too much time and energy saying, why they did this, how they did this, why with me, why? All waste of time, waste of energy. Immediate first answer, this is my karma ball coming back to me. Energy saved, time saved and lot of negative thoughts saved. Now, I am throwing all this wrong behavior at her. She can't change this ball which is coming to her because this ball was thrown by you earlier. What is in her power now? When I behave this way with her, she will create some thought. No? She will create a thought, she will create a feeling, she will speak words, she will behave. What she will do now is her, is her new karma. These are the balls which are coming to you, which you had thrown before. Please keep this figure in your mind. Every ball that is coming to you was thrown before. What she will do now will be her new ball. And what new ball she will throw now will decide her present quality of life and also to remember that the ball she is going to throw now is also going to come back to her. So three pictures. Anji. Yes, even if you just create a thought, that is a ball. That is what we have to remember. Thought, meaning anything happened inside, Word, behavior, everything is energy. In fact, thoughts and feeling is more of an energy than words and behavior because words and behavior are few. Thoughts are... So which one is more energy? 
Sometimes we speak very nicely. Suppose I am being rude to her, in front of everybody she will keep very quiet. So everybody will say, such a nice person, she kept quiet because she was so rude yet she kept quiet. But did she keep quiet in her mind? So when we say, I tolerate, I keep quiet, I remain silent, it will have to be here, not here. Because when it is only here, we suppress it so much that the number of thoughts goes better than that talk. Better than that talk, but talk in the right karma energy. And if you want to keep quiet, which is a very big power, it is called Sehen Shakti, power to tolerate. Tolerance is power, but we use it in a very negative way. We say, oh, I tolerate it so much. If you tolerate, it is power. That's why it's called Sehen Shakti. Why is tolerance called power? Now, so what you think, what you speak, what you behave, present karma. Can everybody please see their scenes of life? Your situations, your relationships, your business, your work, your health of the body, everything. Check everything and remember, where is the ball coming from? There. Why is this happening to me? What I do now? Present karma. So, at every moment, now this picture is very important here, at every moment, my past karma is coming to me. Say this please. At every moment, my past karma is coming to me. Which is all good karmas also. Huh? Past karma doesn't mean anything negative. All good karmas. Today, Sunday morning, you have taken out time for yourself. This is good karma. Somebody else could be sleeping. Somebody else could be watching TV. Somebody else could be fighting early morning Sunday instead of resolving their karma. You took out time for yourself is your good karma. It doesn't happen like this otherwise. So, every scene, my past karma is coming to me. How I respond is my present karma and what will be my present karma will come back to me in the future. So, in every moment, past is coming, present is getting created, future is getting decided. Every minute, every minute, it is called trikal. Trikal means three aspects of time. Past is coming to me, present is getting created, future is getting decided.